you a simple little idea that may or may not work. So uh, let's talk about maglev versus something I call maglift. Uh, okay, so maglev, uh, you know, we know what they are. They're magnetically levitating trains that can take off the ground but never take off into commercial success. Uh, we have things like this where the magnets are in like a U shape that's Japanese style. Uh, we have the German style here or with some uh, magnets here and here. But, uh, you know, that, that's uh, all good and well. Um, now, uh, lately there has been some uh, acknowledgement that you still have to uh, live with the existing infrastructure and uh, perhaps uh, Mayaglev uh, will not take over as a substitute. Uh, there has been designs like this where you have a levitation above an uh, uh, like a rail. I don't know if this is a standard rail or uh, some kind of more conductive rail. Um, and then you have like a lifting, uh, like a special middle rail, which is for lifting. And then uh, this, these two are for stabilization. There's also this uh, 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 Italian project that uh, just uses two rails. I, I, yeah, I don't know how they completely work, but okay, that's all good and well. And this is this uses standard iron rails. Um, neither one of these really made it into the mainstream. Um, now, I just like to mention uh, there was also, uh, besides electro, uh, um, well, besides uh, like an electromagnet or you know superconducting magnet, uh, you could also use a permanent magnet um, uh, to do this. There was an American project in the nineties. That uh, use the Hallback Array. This is basically a bunch of magnets arranged like this. Uh, this is the north, point, arrow pointing north, and you arrange it like this. And then when you move it in this direction, it creates lift, which is all wonderful and good and well. Um, and it turns out that's a cheaper way of doing things. Uh, now, uh, I would also like to mention uh, when you, that uh, the wear and tear uh, of the wheels on the track is a major issue. Especially if you want to go fast, uh, it's not so much an issue with maglev. Uh, yes, it's frictionless, so that's one thing. Second thing is that the uh, force in, where you, the train interacts uh, with the uh, track is a little bit more distributed. Uh, uh, the train wheel is uh, has a very narrow contact, whereas uh, this is a very wide contact. Uh, that that the uh, that the maglev has with the uh, track with its own track uh, so it's a little bit more distributed um, so given all of this information and putting it together um, just a uh, thought occurred to me um, okay well why not have something like uh, you know uh, normal uh, track wheels on both sides and just an assistive lifting uh, uh, maglev uh, you know just passive maglev technology or for stability reasons you might want to slip split it into two uh things a little bit further spread apart anyways so just uh just a thought there um okay why not something like this uh why why would it matter what would it what's the benefit well uh the effectively it, it would lift up the train somewhat how much well that's a good question. Uh, yeah. And then you would not have as uh, much of a force uh, interaction here between the wheel and the rail. Well, that's all good, right? And well, it turns out if you want to go fast, the faster you go on a train, the one of the biggest limitations is the wear and tear you get on the, uh, on the track and the, ra and the wheel. So tra trains can go really actually very fast. Uh, they can go 500 kilometers an hour, to, but they'll wear out the track. Well, you do need a fairly straight track for that. But nonetheless, uh, the problem is that um, it's not commercially uh, sensible to do such a thing. So it might be possible with such a middle tr uh, track, which is completely passive, by the way, so no big maintenance or whatever, 
it might be possible to lighten the load on the tracks and thereby you would uh, not have uh, to work as hard um, uh, with maintenance. It wouldn't cost as much. And thereby making it quite possibly, you know, I'm not, I don't know, I don't have the simulators and, and I don't have the budget to run the experiments, but it would possibly make it possible to um, go and go ahead and uh, run a train like this, uh, 400 kilometers an hour, 450, maybe 500, who knows? I don't know. I sure don't know. Um, so, uh, and I'll never know because I don't have that kind of budget. So, uh, if you want to describe this to somebody, the easiest analogy you can use, which I didn't, is uh, the genius hiker who just tied a helium balloon to his backpack to lighten the load. And I guess he was a real genius until, I guess, uh, you know, unless he's near a cliff or something and the wind blows, then... Uh, uh, anyway, so uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you like the idea. Um, you know, run with it if you can. And, um, you know, make it into a video, make it into a video game. Uh, if you can make it into a company, that's, that's uh, great. Good for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, best of luck with everything. Bye.